For more on the China question, let's bring in Gary Dvorak of the Blue Shirt Group, who advises us at Asia-based companies seeking to IPO here in the U.S. He's currently in China right now, so maybe you can help clear all this up, Gary, about what's happening as far as any potential easing of the COVID zero policy. Is that is that what's really happening? So, so, so Sarah, th thanks for having me on. I uh, appreciate it. Um, as is often the case, we're getting a lot of mixed messages. And uh, as you mentioned, I'm here in Beijing right now, and I've been back in China for about a month, and I had been out for uh, nine months. And the changes over the, the course of nine months have really been stark. And the mixed messages are really coming from, from two directions. One, um, there's a general support by the people for the Communist Party because they've delivered the goods over the last 30 years. Economic growth has been fantastic, uh, and China has really emerged, um, you know, as an economic player. At the same time, they need to continue that, right? And, and the government understands that. And, and one of the, the rays of hope, if you will, uh, over the weekend, there's a very large uh, trade show in Shanghai, an import trade show, and President Xi gave a speech in which he really mm. uh, emphasized the fact that the country needs to open up, uh, revive the economy, et cetera. So uh, they understand that and they're giving that message. At the same time, the biggest challenge internally is the COVID restrictions. And uh, I can tell you just in the nine months since I was gone and came back, they've gotten a, a lot more challenging. It's very difficult to do the most basic things like traveling. You really, it's difficult to plan ahead because out of the blue, there'll be an outbreak. People will get locked down. So uh, it, it's very challenging uh, and discouraging just to, to, to operate your business or even operate your life on a daily basis. And again, there was some hope, uh, there yeah. were some rumors going around that they were gonna uh, uh, reduce the COVID restrictions, but, but very recently uh, the health ministers have said, no, uh, the COVID zero right. policy is one that we're gonna stick with. So it, it's, hard to, it's, it's hard to really see uh, what's, what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah the K-Web, ETF that we track here that follows these Chinese companies is up 18 and percent so far this month on a lot of that optimism. It fell overnight. So I guess, Gary, as someone who advises Chinese companies on whether to go public in the U.S., what exactly are you doing right now? Because we're not seeing any of that happening. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, and the answer is we also work with them after they're public. So we have a whole set of clients uh, that are traded in the U.S. now. Uh, and we continue to work with them because there's there's no IPOs happening and and they're not going to happen for a while. And and even if there weren't the, the really big issues around IPOs, which is the the audit issue uh, that's outstanding, um, you know, companies are looking for a plan B, right? They, they're looking at Hong Kong. They're looking at Singapore as places that they can uh, they can do an IPO if the U.S. is closed off to them. But most of them are sitting and waiting. But having said that, you know, there's a whole set of companies mm -hmm. that are traded in the U.S. markets now. There's over 160 uh, China and Hong Kong based companies that are traded in the U.S. And we're finding that the, the fear factor is so intense right now. And, and look, we, we talk about it every day. You have folks on your yeah. shows that talk about it. You can see it in the charts. Uh, the, the fear is, is unbelievable now in terms of no one wanting to take China risk uh, and, and even look at these stocks. Right, because there's the zero COVID policy, there's the nationalistic policy. We just heard from President Xi. There's the geopolitical tensions. There's the real estate bubble. I mean, there's so, it's such a laundry yeah. list of, of issues right now. So, so what is the big, what is the biggest in your view? And and where does that audit situation stand? Are, do these companies risk getting delisted? Uh, well, absolutely. So the, there's two two elements to it. One, the countries at the highest level need to come to an agreement because the uh, uh, both sides have legitimate claims about access and who can see what. And so they're gonna have to compromise on that. Having said that, uh, we did have a test uh, case where, and this is you know, to your point about uh, the optimism, uh, uh, the PCAOB sent some inspectors to Hong Kong uh, last week and they actually wrapped up their work sooner than they expected. So um, the interpretation has generally been positive on that, that that means that there's been some progress there. But that, that issue needs to be resolved above all else without uh, resolution of, of uh, you know, whether the, the audit uh, firms are compliant. Um, if they're not compliant, if there's not inspection of the audit papers, then uh, there will be a delisting. And the bigger element now is that they're actually uh, potentially accelerating this. There should have been one more year for resolution, but now it may happen uh, this winter.